St. Louis uh, Central School District Board of Education uh, meeting for August 7th, 2024. Um, calling this meeting to order. Starting the attendance roll. Uh, we have Ms. Ms. Van, Van Orton, Mr. Funo, um, myself, Ms. Turner, Ms. Phillips, and Ms. Steinbeck. Not sure, should she? Like, I don't know, but I was just wondering if everyone calls their own name or, you know, but, um, all right, but uh, I'm moving on. Let's, let's, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So first order of business is approval of the draft minutes for July 8th, 2024 organizational meeting. We had a full house that meeting. Um, so so uh, do we have a motion, uh, a move to approve this motion of the draft minutes? All right, Ms. Van Orton. And do we have a second, Ms. Turner? I'm all in favor. Everyone in favor. Motion passes. And we have an approval of draft minutes also for the regular meeting following a draft meeting. Um, similarly, uh, do we have a motion to a, do we, a Mr. Buno and a second, Ms. Turner, and all in favor? Motion passes, all approves. I'm moving on to the board forum. Um, I'm going to start on my right. Ms. Steinbeck, do you, do you have anything? Uh, no, nothing to add. Thanks. Nothing. Thank you. Nothing. All right. And uh, moving on to, to, the, to the public forum, um, read this, this statement here. Residents, students, employees, and business representatives of the East Greenwood Central School District may address the board on matters concerning programs and or operations of the district other than matters involving personnel. Members of the board do not directly respond to citizen concerns during the public forum. If a response is appropriate, either the president or the superintendent will contact the individual in the near future. Those persons wishing to address the board will be recognized by the chair of the meeting and should state for the board their name and address or affiliation with the district or business. While the board does not wish to infringe upon free speech protections, it must be stressed that visitors forum is not deemed to be an open forum. The board president will conduct the, the forum for the orderly and efficient operation of board business. In addition, any remarks which may be considered defamatory or stigmatizing are prohibited and will be declared out of order. All comment shall be limited to five minutes. Um, do we have any comments? All right. So, so moving on to the next part of our agenda, capital project planning phase 1A status. Um, Mr. Simons. Uh, yes, I wanted to let the community know and the board uh, that we have submitted to the state education department the drawings and specifications for phase 1A of the capital project at the previous board meeting on July 8th. We reviewed some of the phasing information regarding the project. Uh, the phase one project includes the replacement of the Columbia High School roof, which is at its um, uh, expiration date, basically, it's a 25, 20 to 25 year old roof that needs to be replaced. Also replacing the outdoor basketball courts and the outdoor tennis courts. Um, <coughs> the project was submitted on July 29th to the State Education Department. Uh, currently, the estimated approval time due to the number of projects that have been submitted from school districts across the state is anywhere between 24 and 26 weeks. Uh, if that timeline holds true, we would anticipate that we would be able to go out to bid once the project is approved and hopefully start construction in mid to late May of 2025, uh, moving that project through the summer. The roofing portion of the project at Columbia High School will 
fall over two summers because of the size of the roof and it's a complete replacement. There's also some areas of asbestos abatement within the roof. We've had our asbestos consultant go onto the roof and do some testing. So over two summers, the summer of 2025 and the summer of 2026 will be the roof. We do anticipate based on the schedule that the basketball courts and the tennis courts would be done uh, over the summer and likely the tennis courts would be ready for the spring of 2026 uh, for the spring tennis season. Uh, we were able to consider the feedback that we received from the coach and some of the parents of the students that play tennis. We were able to find a design <clears throat> working with a Bella architect that could accommodate the ninth court. Mm -hmm. The rationale for the ninth court made sense to us and that typically a uh, tennis match includes six singles matches and three doubles matches occurring at the same time. So that would enable families and players not to have to wait <coughs> you know, earlier uh, and they all can watch all their kids at once. Mm -hmm. There was an offset in the cost of that, which I want to bring to the board's attention. Some of the initial estimates that Turner Construction had put together included some amenities that we didn't ask for. Mm -hmm and weren't planning on having, including lighting of the tennis court. So when we removed the lighting from the estimate, it was never part of the plan. And we added the ninth court, the difference was about $45,000 more to do, do the ninth court to accommodate it. So we did it in a cost-effective manner and it, it won't really put in jeopardy any future costs in, that will be coming in other later aspects of the project. So we thought it was a good <coughs> idea to do it to support the program. We also have high utilization from community members of the mm -hmm. tennis courts and it's been a the condition of those tennis courts have been something that has been brought to my attention for a number of years and I'm glad that we could replace them. So happy that it's getting in on time. Uh, we're proceeding with the design of phase 1B, uh, which will include the work on the golf athletic fields behind the school, as well as an elevator renovation and upgrade at the school. Uh, everything is subject to change based on you know, what happens regarding the state education department approval times. Um, we try to be conservative in our estimate regarding the timelines to assume the longest amount of time that this could take uh, to be approved. But uh, everything is proceeding very well, and we're working very closely, effectively with our architect and our construction managers. Thank you, Mr. Simons. Mm -hmm. um, do, do we have any comments from the board on the capital project? Well, I think it's gra uh, great that we were able to incorporate the feedback from the family and community. I think that that's important. Um, you know, that we're responsive to the needs. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simons. Moving on to the to update on summer programs. We're going to turn this over to Mr. Stiles. Introduce thank our guests. Thank you, Mr. Simons. So before I turn over to Mr. Hartnagel, I just wanted to give a just a brief update on um, our, our summer programs uh, this year. So uh, we're running three, ultimately, I guess, three summer programs. We have our KA Elevate program, we have our extended school year program, and then we have, um, you know, high school credit recovery that's going on as well. So Mr. Hartnagel is the principal of our summer programs overseeing both the KA Elevate program and our extended school year program. Um, the Elevate program actually just ended this past Friday, served about 130 students. Um, as you know, I believe this was our third year of having the Elevate program and it was funded through the federal money, um, which is expiring, um, you know, as we speak, you know, this, this year. Um, so we had to make some decisions, um, you know, kind of the plan the whole time was to have the um, Elevate program be a targeted program this year. So we looked at our student data and utilized our Renaissance Star uh, assessment data to identify students that we think would have benefited from this and open it up to those students um, first. So we were able to serve all of those students, um, families that wanted to enter that were that were targeted there. Um, for our extended school year program, something that um, you know is is driven by students' IEPs, um, you know, and their you know their needs. That program has about 120 students in it this year. Um, I know that Mr. Hartnagel and, and uh, a few teachers are going to talk about some of the, the good work that's been going on, um, you know, this summer. But before I in, invite them up, we do have a short little video that uh, was put together by um, Mr. Adam about our summer school program.
Um, so I'd like to invite Mr. Hartnagel to, if he wants to kind of come on up and uh, with a few teachers to just talk about some of the highlights and great work uh, that's been going on this summer. I do want to say, you know, um, Mr. Hartnagel has done a great job this summer. Um, it's not easy. You know, summer school is not the, the easiest, um, mm -hmm. you know, position. You're kind of taking kids from, you know, different buildings, bringing them together for a short period of time. Um, and he's done a really great job along with the, the teachers and, and staff that are in our summer program. There's so many examples of some of the work that students did. Yeah. So. Sorry. All right. So we ran the two programs this summer. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Elevate ended on Friday last week. So we did a bit of a celebration for the students. We uh, brought all their work that they wanted to display in the cafeteria. Uh, each classroom that we had, uh, students were able to walk around on Friday to check out each other's work. And uh, during the day, we celebrated with ice cream. So that was nice for everyone to have that. Um, so we still have two more weeks of the ESY program. And everything's great. Um, students in the programs uh, pretty much enjoyed it. Um, they covered the Olympics, uh, booked the Maze Runner, had a lot of ocean themes, shark themes, fish, uh, as well as working on IEP goals. So the summers <laughs> are going super well and everyone's having a good time. So I'm going to pass it over to a couple of our teachers. They can share their perspective. Hi. Um, good evening, Board of Education. Can you see me? <laughs> and East Greenbush community. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Corey, and I'm happy to be here this evening to speak about the extended school year program. During the school year, I teach the third through fifth grade language concepts special class at Janae, and I've had the pleasure of continuing to work with my students during ESY. Our summer school program is one that our special education staff look forward to every year for so many reasons. First and foremost, we're able to continue focusing on helping our students make progress toward their IEP goals and maintain goals that they have worked hard to achieve during the school year. Within our half day program, I'm able to continue running targeted small group instruction in both ELA and math, as well as incorporating science and social studies concepts through thematic units of study. I'd like to share an example of one of our weeks of study. Last week, my class studied ice cream and how it is made, culminating in an experiment where we made our own ice cream in a bag in class, tying together the texts we had read during reading group, measuring ingredients, sequencing and following directions, and of course, sharing opinions after tasting the treat. Getting the opportunity to collaborate with special educators, related service providers, and teaching assistants from across the district is also an added bonus. Both my students and I always leave ESY with new tools in our tool, be tool belt, so to speak. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share about the extended school year program. Good evening, um, I'm Nancy Garcia. Um, this is going to be my 18th year in the district, but I'm also a Columbia grad, uh, 1994. So East Greenbush is my home and I love being a teacher here. I love and look forward to ESY every year. Um, during the school year, I am 11th grade uh, special ed and 10th grade um, consultant teacher, um, primary instruction, curriculum equivalent, whatever the current name is for English. During the summer this year, I got to work with K2 language concepts. So a huge jump. Um, which I wasn't sure how that was going to go. I'm used to the 11th graders. But what makes East Greenbush and the ESY program so special is just how we support each other. Um, working with kids, I had kids coming from Belltop and from Green Meadow, and their teachers communicated really well with me. Here are things that work well. Here are things you might want to try. Here are um, the teachers that are in ESY who are normally with younger kids, what do you need? How can we help? And it's been a great summer. And this is the first time I've been way out of my comfort zone in the beginning, but it's actually something that I'm hoping that I will get to do again next summer. So as she spoke about with the, the goals and where we're really focused on the goals through our activities and we have smaller groups so we can do cooking and we can do um, imaginative play and role modeling and things like that, 
the kids have a great experience. The teachers get to work together with, with all the different staff. We see each other as we're, you know, we go out and walk in the hall to see each other. And it's just a wonderful opportunity for the kids, for the staff. And it really showcases how strong East Greenbush is. Any questions at all from, from the board? Just a little bit on background. Is the program, um, are they voluntary or strongly encouraged? Um, I guess it depends on the program a little okay. bit. Um, so the Elevate program, yes, is voluntary. Um, K through eight, at the, you know, it was strongly encouraged for our for our targeted students. Um, and we had a pretty a pretty good turnout, um, mm -hmm. you know, from from that. Um, with our extended school year, that is recommended through IEPs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with that, so that's a, a little bit different of a program. Um, and then, you know, the credit recovery program is, you know, high school students really looking at, you know, maybe they weren't successful in, in some classes and have fallen behind. So we have um, uh, a program called Apex where they can come in and, um, you know, get that credit recovery kind of an at their pace um, there. So. Mm -hmm. Right, a couple questions. On the Elevate program, um, half day? Half day, yes. And and it was federal funded, but what was the cost of that program this year? Yeah. You know? I do know. I, I don't want to give you a wrong number, so I can roughly. I can get that to, to Mr. Simons. Um roughly about forty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, I think. Are we looking to budget that for the future? We would like to. Okay. Yeah. We Thank want you. to talk about that as a priority for next year not making a commitment to it right now but to have it on a list of things that we think we want to preserve i think it's really important this is his turn right now right mm -hmm. you know, the students that are showing progress during the regular year to keep that progress going yeah. in english and, and mathematics reading in particular literacy we would like to try to keep a program that focuses on the students with the greatest needs who aren't part of the esy mm -hmm. program the esy program is uh, funded through the special education fund is that okay. what you see right Right. Yeah. So exactly. I'd, I'd like to put together, you know, during the budget season, a, a proposal of, you know, a uh, continued KA Elevate program and what that would, you know, what that would look like um, and continue to have it be a targeted, a targeted program to keep the costs, you know, reasonable for us to, to consider. And how many students do we have in the credit recovery? Um, the credit recovery is, I don't have the exact number of that because it, it fluctuates a little bit, um, really depending on, um, you know, that need, and you might have some students who ultimately, you know, they weren't successful for the, for the year in a course, but they really only, you know, maybe failed a quarter. So they're able to come in and get that work done pretty, pretty quickly, where you may have a student who, you know, was unsuccessful for a longer period of time, and it's going to be in it, um, you know, longer. So that, that is a little bit different. Um, so I don't have the, the number on that. Okay. Cause I know that's important because I know students failures is we want to try to keep the kids on pace for graduation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I yeah. so want to thank the teachers for coming mm -hmm. in. And great program, as mm -hmm. always, and serving our special education students. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully that uh, it's September, they're ready to rock and roll, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Question. With the credit recovery program, so you mentioned that that is they're completing the work, the, the term or terms that they failed. So is that an online program? Is that something provided by the teacher that they were with? Yep. So it's not. So it's, the program is called Apex. It is an mm -hmm. online program with support from teachers. So there are, um, you know, some teachers who are in there as well mm -hmm. um, to support. But it is really more of a, you know, kind of an at your own pace, um, and then teachers there to support when needed. Okay. Right. I have one more question. Um, I'm also wondering to. Uh, how, how do we measure the success? I know like we saw like um, the charts with the summer drop off in the education. I'm just wondering like through the summer program, you know, what kind of tools do we use to say, you know, how well it's working versus if kids, you know, weren't in a program or not. Um, again, I'll, I'll go kind of through each one. So, you know, for the credit recovery program, ultimately we're really looking to see is, you know, our students, you know, getting back on track so that they're, you know, they're able to graduate in, in those four years. Um, with the, you know, the ESY program is looking at their IEP goals. Are they continuing to make progress throughout and not having that, you know, those 10 or so weeks off without mm -hmm. that, um, you know, without that education. So it's really tied to the IEP goals. Uh, the LBA program, um, you know, I guess it's a little bit challenging to have some, you know, hard numbers there. Um, as prior uh, two years, it was open to anyone. Mm -hmm. So you may have had students in there who were doing really well throughout the year. 
Um, I don't want to say everyone can't benefit from summer school, but clearly they can. Um, but I think now having it, um, you know, that targeted program, what we're going to be able to then do is see who was part of the, the summer program, mm -hmm. look at, you know, where were they in mm -hmm. their spring, um, you know, that spring star yep. uh, data, where are they now going to be in the fall? Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're looking to see not that summer dip that we may have seen you know, in prior years. I just want to compliment the teachers and uh, Mr. Hartnagel for making learning fun in the summer as well. Mm -hmm. The themes of the Olympics and the making of the ice cream and the other things that we do to keep it engaging. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes the kids want to come to the, come to the summer programs, and we appreciate the work that the teachers do to keep the learning engaging mm -hmm. in July. So, nice job. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so, so moving on to uh, the discussion items, uh, this is going to be a student me member of the Board of Education. Is, is, this, this, is, is this yours, Mr. Simons? Uh, yeah, so um, actually, Mr. Buno mentioned this, I think, at mm -hmm. the first meeting, or either the last meeting of the year or the first meeting in July, and wanted to keep this on as a discussion item. Um, the New York State Legislature uh, has a bill that I believe has at this point passed both mm -hmm. houses of the legislature. It has not been signed into law by the governor that would require school districts to uh, have a student serve on the Board of Education as an ex officio member, a non-voting member of the board. It's likely that the governor will sign this legislation. Mm -hmm. and it likely will come into effect for the 25-26 school year. But there's been some discussion um, within the board that we may want to do that sooner than mandated, or at least have some thorough discussions of it so that we're ready. Um, I provided on the board agenda as an attachment, an update from the New York State School Boards Association regarding the process requirements for selection of the student board member, as well as a copy of the bill, which was provided to me by uh, the New York State Council of School Superintendents. There is some discretion that the board has on the selection process. It can be a member of the uh, uh, student body, such as the student body president. It can be selected by the high school government, which would be the student council. It can be somebody selected by the high school principal, somebody selected by the superintendent, or a student selected by a majority vote of the school board. I don't think it has to be either or. The legislation isn't clear. So I think you have a lot of discretion in how you want to structure this so that we're making sure that we invite any and all students who might be interested mm -hmm. in doing it, that we uh, make sure that the selection process is done in a way that shows that we are open to any and all students who want mm -hmm. to participate uh, in line with the board's goals to be inclusive and to support diversity. Uh, involving student voice in the process, I think would be uh, an important consideration, but and then ultimately a process that leads up to the board approving the person, but mm -hmm. has a lot of input and student involvement yes. in it. So we're selecting a, a student for um, service that you know meets some of those considerations. We kind of want to open it up for discussion. Yeah, I think uh, it would be good to get somebody in place sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. We can do something in the year. Mid year, let the students come back, have a process, like you said, Mr. Simons, and then we would bring something to someone or the team of the admin just to see because they're taking a little interest in this. And maybe we get a little group together to talk about a process, do like a shared document. Sure. I, do, I think we should multiple criteria. I do like the idea of, um, you know, and input. Maybe, and maybe Mike see yeah. what it says a third of the schools already have it, right? Yeah, so what are they says, what yeah. are they using the process, as you have to reinvent the yeah. wheel. Okay. There's a way to look at that. I know <laughs> typically in the past it's been a basically had to go to the vote the voters to get that process approved. And then right. the board could use the criteria <clears throat> to like to make a selection. So mm -hmm. we can get some samples, it'd be great. Yeah. So I could take care of collecting some examples of how boards sure. have it through now, and then I, with the board's support, I'll reach out to Mike and any other board members that want to work with maybe me and Mr. Harkin yes. on I'd the love process. To. I'd love to. Okay, and then we'll create a process that's open and um, run by the board. Run by the board. So I'll I'll start organizing that, and I'll get in touch with yeah. Mike and Michelle. Is anybody else here who? Yeah, I'd be willing. To. Okay, depending on what time it is. Okay, <laughs> so I'll reach out. 
and um, we'll get a, a group going and we'll get some discussions going and I'll find out how other school board members or how other school boards have approached this. Do you know of any around here, Jeff? Jeff? Um, I I do, but I'll decide, many many of them have, really? but I don't I don't know exactly which ones. But you know, this has been a discussion among the superintendents. Yeah. This is coming up. So. I think one thing, if, if we do have some flexibility, it might even be worth just kind of thinking through um, a junior and a senior appointment mm -hmm. and having some continuity and even like some mm -hmm. kind of mentorship. And I think even like being in pairs may be a nice thing for the students too. Yeah. Um, and then like the junior would sort of immediate, like a, would be the presumptive senior, assuming they still want him, but it might just That's be. True. Kind of something if we have some flexibility we'll okay about that. i can look into that i think it's important to have um the um student themselves uh do some upfront work yeah. to demonstrate yeah. their commitment yeah. and their interest in doing this yeah. as well as part, mm -hmm. yeah. part yeah. of the process yeah. whether that's an essay whether that's a, a simple letter or whether that's something that is uh, showing that they've put in some thought and, mm -hmm. and the commitment that, in, that this involves yeah. I, I know I would like to see where they suggested the student, either the student body president or the student government selecting. I would like at least some step of the process to involve the other students making this selection the same way the voters make their yeah. selections. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would um, help the students feel more represented by the yeah. person versus yeah. the person being just selected yeah. by the adults. Mm -hmm. Does this, I'm, I'm just wondering, right, the interplay between this and the report out we get from student council, correct? They come and report out at the beginning of the board meeting. Right. Um, I, it's To me, it's kind of a little bit similar, right? You're increasing your feedback and your loop and you're encour encouraging, you know, um, the folks who we really are here, you know, you know, to, to work for, right? And the students. Um, so I think that that's great. Anytime you can in, in, incorporate and encourage and hear from the, those folks is is an is a win is a win in my book. Um, one of the things I would caution is that um, I just don't want to. I think it's important to hear from different students, especially mm -hmm. if we're elevating certain voices. It's really important for me that if it is voting, that it's not the same people we see over and over again. Right. Um, and I'm very cognizant of that. And so sometimes the people I think, you know, are in the in the voting when you vote for your class and who votes and, you know, who gets in front, I just want to be cognizant about mm -hmm. that as well. Um, I would like to be able to hear if we're doing this, we, we need to do it right. And we need to mm -hmm. do it in a way that really, um, you know, responds to who we are as a board and, and what we're for. Um, so I'd just like us to keep that in mind um, as we go through this process, um, being mindful of the voices that we're elevating and we're hearing from. I think it has to be a process that engages any students, uh, really all students, and giving them a fair opportunity to be put into this role and making sure that it isn't simply a proctored vote. Right, and, you know, and there's right. There's a and, lot of layers yeah. to it that ensures that. And what is we, fair, right, yeah. is different some people, what they think is fair is different from what's fair. I prefer, you know, if it's an equitable way that that would be, I think, the best way forward in my eyes. There, there's a part of me that says, like, I wouldn't take it from the student body. Yeah. You know, like, I think it needs to be somebody different. I think it. Yep. Right. Yeah. I saw but the, let's see what else everybody right. else does. Yeah. Right? I saw the process where the student council officers come let us know what's happening with student activities is completely separate from this. I saw this as a more extensive yeah. role, not a report at the board member. The person is sitting with us having discussions. Having the discussions, yes. Yeah. But I think, yeah, so practice. my point is that if it's similar to my eyes, I think that sometimes when we get the student council report outs, and we can probably talk about this as a different agenda item at a different date, is that I think sometimes um, we hear about prom, we hear about the dances, and that's great, but when they want to make a decision about changing what homecoming court looks like to be more inclusive, I would love for that to be brought here to the table um, as well as write prom and those things. But I would love to hear it from, from their body themselves, mm -hmm. how they came about that decision rather than trying to decipher it from social media. Okay. So perhaps, yes, I do think having students on the board 
could possibly help us be more informed yeah. as well. Um, and I, I welcome that. I, and I welcome, you know, the student council bringing, you know, more substantial Very good. items. Okay. Excellent. So I will follow up with those board members who are interested in helping us to create an equitable and good selection process. Okay. I just wanted to just add to, um, um, I'm still trying to learn the rules around, um, you know, uh, Oh, no, all I was going to say was just that there's just certain ways that we go about um, in the legislation that allows for us to, mm -hmm. to to actually select. So so I think the best way, I think that's what you were saying was the best way to actually create the selection is for the board so that we can inform the process because the approval only could occur certain ways, right? right. Yeah. 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 So the board would be involved up front in the development of the process, having it really be kind of laid out procedurally in written form and then we work with the high school administration and the students to to implement it and then ultimately the student is nominated and brought to the board for approval that was mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. my vision of it sounds great so, so you're involved in the development of the process but you're also putting your stamp of uh, vote on the, on the selection of the individual student thank you, thank you. thank you mr Buno, for <laughs> I think it's good to do it earlier than it's yeah. required. Right. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, move, move moving on to the to the retreat date on the, on the board agenda, um, Mr. Simons. Yes, I think we're all set as far as everyone being available, which is great. Uh, we worked through a couple of different options for September fourth at six o'clock. Uh, we have a uh, calendar appointment our uh, board retreat development committee with Jamie from uh, New York State School Boards Association, who is the director of governmental relations, I think, or board development, I'm not sure of his title. So we're gonna have a meeting with him to discuss, you know, a perspective on what the goals of the retreat would be. We'll report that back to the board. I anticipate that there may be some kind of survey that will come out from School Boards Association to all the board members to participate in, in the input that we need to have a very successful retreat. For the purposes of the public, uh, board development and board um, training mm -hmm. is uh, an important requirement for boards of education. Uh, an agenda for a board retreat has to be focused on board training and board development. Uh, it really to get uh, to work on the relationships among the board, the focus of the board, communication structures that make for an effective governance team. So it's something that we have done annually and we're proceeding to do that on September 4th. And I appreciate everyone who provided some input and help in getting the dates up. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Is Nisba gonna send on Jamie sent out any kind of survey or anything? I think he yeah there's been some discussion of yes, that. Yeah. We're having a Zoom calendar meeting with him next week. Oh good to discuss it and then I think he's gonna yeah. follow up with that. Good. So we'll talk about um good what the, the goals of the meeting what we want to accomplish with him and then he'll he'll have a survey that he sends out to the board members um that will inform a little bit more of how how he'll run the meeting awesome. and we will have it's a six o'clock start time so i know that's challenging for some people so we will have dinner available for everyone and stephanie is taking care of that thank you mr simon You're welcome um, all right, moving on to the to the regular business uh, part of the agenda. Um, this is approval of programs for resident children with disabilities. Um, is, are there any questions or comments about about this agenda item? So we'll, we'll move. Uh, do anyone move to uh, to approve this uh, motion? Ms. Steinbeck, a second. Ms. Kamersky, all, all in favor? Mo oh. All right. Um, so, so motion passes, um, and I skipped over a, a discussion item. So, 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 so the approval of programs passes. Going back to recent NYSPA professional development for the board of education members, mm -hmm. um, an opportunity for us to, to. So, I know a number of board members participated in uh, some opportunities for 
professional development that were provided in July. Some of you went to the uh, leadership conference, which was right here in Albany. Others went to the law conference. I know Mark Mann went to the law conference. He sent me the packet. He's not here this evening. Uh, and I attended a, for our firm uh, school law briefing. So I just thought it would be good for us to, um, even though we only had one meeting in July, everyone knows that the board members stay active and are learning about their roles as a board. And I didn't know if anybody wanted to report out anything that they thought was particularly interesting and beneficial that we might have to follow up on in terms of some things that you might want us to consider doing uh, that you learned about at these trainings. I know Emily yeah. and Jesse and Jennifer is not here, but I know Jennifer participated in some training and and Mark Mann, among others, I think. But. Yeah, I, I can definitely talk about the leadership in education um, was a two day conference. Um, so on, on a Friday and a Saturday and um, Jesse and I gladly, you know, took time off and showed up on Saturday as well. And um, I think it was really beneficial. And it's one of the ones I, this is my second time going and I'll go every year that I can. Um, one of the most impactful things is hearing from um, the New York State Education Department, um, and they kicked us off, and it was a panel, and you had a lot of um, deputy commissioners there, a lot of people who are, um, you know, the leaders who are making certain decisions at the state level, um, and hearing their perspective and where they want um, the education system in New York to go. Um, is really is really enlightening and helpful, I think, in, in keeping that big picture context. One of the things that um, I really thought, oh, I gotta, we got to bring this back, is that they talked about, you know, um, kind of the, and we've talked, I think we've talked about it before, is, you know, um, the stress on regions and the exams and um, not moving away from it, but thinking about, if that means success for everyone, what does it mean and how do we make sure that everyone is included? Um, and I really thought about, you know, how we've already had that right as our goals and, you know, all learner focused. And um, one of the things that they talked about, which, you know, I talked to one of the deputy commissioners afterwards, and we're hopefully going to link up with her is they, the state did portrait of a graduate. And um, they really um, are interested in partnering with districts on, you know, how that looks and, and you know, feedback from it. And, you know, I said, we just, I went up and talked to, to this deputy commissioner afterwards. And I said, we just, you know, start, you know, did portrait of a graduate. And, um, you know, I would love, I'm sure the district and, um, would love to, you know, be a part of that. I'm sure that they don't exactly align. Um, I think I knew that they didn't. But there's a few that did, and I think um, that speaks to I think the work we're doing, um, matching up, and perhaps a little bit right um, before on trend with what we'll see from the state. So I think that that was really reassuring um, that they're you know that the state's um, you know priorities really align um, with ours as well, um, and that's always I think great to great to feel to know and feel so you're not having to put in all this additional effort and you kind of you know feel justified in what we talk about and the efforts we put in so that was a really great session and um, one of the ones you know I look forward to is the state um, impact there the other one that I uh, very quickly will talk on is um, there was a session um, called measuring success for all and it was really essentially um, harnessing the power of data and I felt like that one, um, you know, everyone in the room lit up, right? And everyone was seeing how some, two districts presented, how they were using data to make informed decisions about what success looks like for the district, who the students, student-centered data, right, about um, you know, their success and some areas they needed improvement, and they were able to make decisions based on data that they had. And thus, you could see um, their outcomes starting to trend right in the way that they wanted. Um, and I thought that that was really great to, to hear. And I know that we talk a lot about data here. And, um, you know, we just had a presentation, I feel like that brought data, which was great. And um, hoping that, um, you know, we can possibly share that um, presentation, mm -hmm. um, and then think about how this, how our district can really harness data as well. 
um, maybe in conversations we're having or things we want to focus on. Um, one of the things too that they um, <coughs> talked about in that is um, doing a culture survey, and that was um, the whole district community wide. And um, they talked about there was a lot of power in that, um, understanding where the perceptions was and and where the community felt. And I thought that that was really interesting, right? Um, and how they were able to have that feedback loop with the community um, and the larger, I think. Um, folks maybe they or voices they wouldn't hear, hear from and um, talking about how you're getting data that is measurable and you can trend over time and I thought that that was really that would be useful as well and I know when we talk about certain things things we want to do or where priority should be um, I think about oh if we knew or if we had mm -hmm. you know some sort of idea of where where folks stand might be helpful so Wanted to share share those two quick points um, and things I you know took away. So, and Jesse sent me that presentation mm -hmm. today, and I've already started some conversations with Mr. Styles about it. And I thought it was yeah. I thought it was pretty impressive. Yeah, the organizing data. I think so, and like the and tied the, it to the yes. board goals. And I think the issues that they had, right, were not issues, I think, that that we specifically experience. So, like, the context of it, mm -hmm. right, is is not exactly, but how, really, it's, like, how they assessed a problem, mm -hmm. yeah. the tools that they used to do it. It's It was the method and the process. Yes. And if you're a process person, you ate that up. And you realized how they're making informed decisions mm -hmm. and how then they're going to get the outcomes that they want because they're very strategic about how they go about doing it. Um, so I thought, yeah, I thought it was very, very, um, very useful. Yeah, I, of course. I, I just wanted to share too. Um, my, my favorite part of it, like, you know, is like my, my favorite part of it really was getting to know you better. Right. What? No, 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 seriously. Cause it's important, especially leading into the board retreat. Right. It's cause part of it is, you know, when we say, you know, all students seeing all students, it, you know, it's, it's a culture, right. It starts with us seeing all each other. Right. And, and mm -hmm. by learning each other, what, what matters, how we see things and, and, you know, just looking at that from a perspective of, of how we put that inside the policies that, that really was, one of my favorite parts, mm -hmm. um, you know, thinking about too uh, about communication challenges that the Board of Education um, was was having, you know, where um, as they were pursuing seeing all students and identifying success for all students, um, some people in the communities were viewing it as um, making less rigorous standards. Mm -hmm. um, so it helped me to appreciate that as we consider like portrait of a graduate, you know, communication is vital. You know, the truth is we're, we're not yes. making it less rigorous. We're considering how to make it more rigorous to apply to a wider range of students, whereas the prior standard was limited just to a certain subset. So I think just thinking about how we message um, these communications, um, it definitely helped me to appreciate, um, you know, as, as, as Ms. Nybeck was saying, um, how in EG we're always leading, you know, the conversation, which is very encouraging. You know, I'm thinking about portrait of a graduate our capital project, bringing ACs into the school. Um, um, and also uh, student council, um, um, considering that as, as part, and it's just all like we're always on trend. Um, and, and I would just add, you know, really thinking intentionally about when we say seeing all students, what do that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, we're targeting everyone. Mm -hmm. How do we get to everyone? You know, because in the process of making sure that we elevate the unseen, we also don't want to mitigate those who are overheard so that everyone can appreciate that they have a seat at the table, they're being listened to, and we care, you know, about the mass. So, you know, I definitely appreciated the conference. So I appreciate that board members take the time to participate in those uh, types of sessions. And I'm actually looking forward to more conversations like this when we go to the uh, Nisbo Convention uh, in New York City this year. We'll have some time to reflect on the sessions together and it's always a good a growth experience and we always bring something back to help our students and I appreciate uh, that commitment. Um, just briefly, I, I attended a couple of different things in a similar uh, vein. Uh, Dr. Cruz always organizes a summer institute for the superintendents in the component districts and I've always participated in it since the first time I got here. Um, we did have uh, some uh, great presentations and some great conversations this year. Um, the first was um, 
presented by, you may know, you may not know uh, the movie. Um, I gotta think of the name of it right now. Um, it was a producer, movie producer of uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Have you ever heard of that movie? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> who uh, is now doing, in addition to producing and directing movies, doing professional development and leadership consultation. And he focuses on um, being a producer. You know, how do you get the best out of the people uh, mm -hmm. around you? as he has had to do as a as a movie producer. How do you tap into the talents of others around you to produce something um, and um, you know, bring everybody together to produce something, which was an award-winning film. He also weaved in themes about being uh, the importance of sensitivity to students like the main character mm -hmm. in Napoleon Dynamite. And that character was actually autobiographical about himself and how he grew up and some of the experiences that he had in high school, uh, not quite feeling like he fit in. Uh, weaving in some experiences where he himself was a contestant on The Price is Right, and kind of connected <laughs> that, showed us that, that clip and kind of connected that to some of the things that we, we do in schools. So it was really, I, I went in as a skeptic and I came out really happy that I went to that portion of it because it really had a lot of meaningful connections to school. And then he has, now he's publishing children's books and he, um, he presented us with an autographed copy of a children's book that he wrote that I plan to give to somebody in the district. Well, I haven't given it to him yet, so I will not tell who that is, uh, but it's about uh, a child and acceptance of a child who has uh, some pretty bad habits in terms of her, the way she keeps her room. Uh, so it was really meaningful. And, and, and connected and it was nice to meet him and he was very gracious and we took a photo as a group with him and um, I went back and I watched the movie. I don't think that's the part of it. Um, <laughs> second part was, as you know, uh, uh, Science of Reading is an important initiative and Gladys had her staff and curriculum development specialists gather data from each of our respective districts about some of the programs and strategies and interventions we're all using that are consistent with the standards for the science of reading, uh, some of the assessments. And uh, we felt after that present, that data was shared back with us, we felt that there was a lot more in common among our districts in terms of how we're addressing reading and what we may be utilizing different tools. There really is a solid basis within our Quest R3 region component districts that we're on the right track regarding what the governor is expecting and the state education department will be coming out with in terms of uh, literacy uh, in instruction. Yeah. We had a great presentation from a panel of UAlbany experts on uh, AI mm -hmm. and actually got to do some hands-on uh, trials in terms of working with AI. And we had some good conversations about the line between allowing your staff to utilize it and then at what point do you loosen up and with the help and support of our technology directors start to have students utilizing it. Um, there are a lot of resources available through UAlbany to help support this effort. And Mr. Stiles and Peter and I are meeting, I think tomorrow, uh, to discuss some of the things I learned and I'm gonna share with them some of the tools and uh, links that were shared with us, but that was really pretty uh, interesting. And then we had somebody from the state education department, it may have been the same uh, assistant commissioner that we spoke with to give us an update on the rollout of the new uh, graduation requirements and mm -hmm. um, one of the things that she emphasized i think the state is going about it in a very thoughtful manner it may have been reported in the media that the regents they're no longer uh, doing regents exams that's not really an accurate mm -hmm. portrayal as i yeah. just said uh, regents exams will continue to be an option but there will be other pathways uh, and other measures that you can measure how kids are meeting those uh, portrait of a graduate skills, uh, including uh, authentic assessments, uh, portfolio assessments, evidence that students have engaged in certain activities, including community service, such as the seal of civic readiness. And it was a good collaboration. And as superintendents, we were very supportive of the direction of the state, although we have some questions regarding funding, of course, and other things that um, will come into play in terms of districts being able to implement for all students uh, all the things that uh, we're talking about. 
very good experience. Um, I also went to the Ferrara Firm School Law Conference, which is a one day event. I provided the board with a packet. Uh, there was an update on various considerations regarding uh, seniority and personnel in terms of considering um, uh, both educational law, certified people and civil service in terms of the district's obligations for considering seniority and those kinds of things that sometimes are unclear. Uh, there was a good presentation on student discipline and Title IX, uh, as well as how Title IX applies to employees. Uh, there are some court cases pending uh, where states are uh, seeking uh, some uh, different uh, approaches than the U.S. Department of Education is putting in uh, place. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, I'm in the process of, after attending that presentation, I sent, sent you know, all my central office people a copy of, of looking at our first policy committee agenda. And there's some work that I'm asking the Ferrara firm to do to review our policy regarding bullying, intimidation, and harassment in light of some of the presentations to see what we can do to be more consistent in the way that we respond to those kinds of issues in the district. So mm -hmm. um, even though we've only had one meeting, it's been a busy July and um, I appreciate that the board gives me the opportunity to learn and I plan on bringing some of this information forward through some of the various committees. <laughs> I, have a, I have a quick question, Mr. Simon. Yeah. Just along the lines of, of AI um, and part of it being the district goals to thinking about differentiated learning. Um, when we talk about all students, I'm just wondering just as the AI discussions develop and um, thinking about like whole learner focus and also future driven education, particularly the future driven education piece. I think when we think all, all, all students, I think differentiated learning, AI could be a vital resource yes. to, to push that goal. Absolutely. So, In addition to tools that could be utilized with students for individualization, there were interesting tools that are available as uh, AI tools to provide professional coaching to teachers mm -hmm. through AI, which I found very interesting. And there's an opportunity to explore that. Awesome. No, okay. At um, the Leadership and Education um, Conference, there was a breakout session on AI as well that that I attended and um, can share those as well, documents as well. But um, this person was saying that, um, you know, there's a variety of uses. And um, if you take the stance that we're not going to embrace it or look at it, um, you know, we it's like you, you might be doing a disservice. Yeah to the students, to the staff, understanding that it could be a powerful tool in efficiency of, of work and of the effectiveness and learning ability of the student, not writing things for them, but helping them learn and understand, getting immediate feedback on mm -hmm. grammar and stuff mm -hmm. like that, that normally would take a teacher a lot of time to review, you know, <laughs> initially things also they mentioned that um you know they were this this person um had a child that had an iep and they gave all of the information and even in the format and put it in the format of what it, name that school district and they said it was the best iep that they've mm -hmm. ever seen for their child um and i just was so taken back by that um and it really helped me kind of understand AI and um, a little bit more and how to think about it when we're thinking about, you know, the school district as board members. It would be a huge time saver for teachers. For sure. Yeah. You know, and when Bill Daggett was here, he presented a similar theme. He said, we want to help you get your nights and weekends back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that interesting. Was that, that was the same. Be careful and utilize the tool and verify <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Moving on to the CSEA automotive mechanic pay rate uh, MOA. Are there any uh, questions about about this motion? Is there a motion to approve? Right, Mr. Simon, I just wanted for the public's uh, understanding as we come to an agreement with the CSEA, which is our unit that represents the uh, bus drivers and uh, mechanics, as well as uh, food service employees and some other employees that uh, we are able to hire uh, mechanics for the 
transportation garage at a higher starting rate mm -hmm. than what we typically have been able to do within the contract at step three um, because we are having trouble filling those positions and the rate that we currently have at step one and one was uh, settled in the last contract even at step two we're not competitive with the private sector mm -hmm. so this is uh, an agreement that we will do for now and we're going to continue these discussions when the contract expires uh, later on this school year thank you so this will allow our new starting rate to be 28 dollars 54 an hour for the 24 25 school year I'm just marissa what, what is like the typical uh, market rate for, for for auto mechanics that we're trying to compete with here so in private sector um they are paid um what we've been seeing with candidates coming in at a much higher rate um, but, um, you know, we also make sure uh, we provide all the information about being part of the um, employee retirement system. Um, we talk about the district benefits. So um, we have those benefits where they may not have that in private sector. So it's really just weighing both sides. Yes. Um, but just that initial coming through the door, we want to be able to offer, you know, a minimum of that step three, which is the 2854. Um, just to enhance the number of applicants we're receiving. And then we can have those um, conversations at the table that these are the benefits we can provide and there is a retirement. Um, so we, we do our best to make sure they know that. Okay. Some of the candidates that declined positions were making more than $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. Is there, is there a motion to approve this MOA? Ms. Turner, is there a second? Ms. Ms. Van Orden, um, all in favor? All, all approved, motion passes. And moving on to a, to a amendment, a resolution to approve um, Mr. McHugh, and I'm principal at, at Howard Goff Middle School for the 24-25 school year. This. this is adjustment to his compensation, which is consistent with the agreement you approved mm -hmm. at a previous meeting that once the EG, East Green Bus Administrators Association contract was settled, he would get the same adjustment mm -hmm. for the next school year at the comparable rate to a, um, an off step, which is the administrators with the most experience, which was 2.75%. Mm -hmm. So this enables us to pay him that 2.75% adjustment in salary. Jeff, tangential to this, what is the rough plan? We're going to post for a new principal for Golf Middle School, That's likely right. in the late fall, uh, for late October, early November. Uh, the if every um, piece of information we're receiving from the state is that the state will not likely approve the waiver again for another year next year for uh, the salary earnings cap. Uh, Mr. McHugh is a retired administrator. He is part of the teacher retirement system. There's been a waiver for the last two years that we could hire retirees and pay them more than the cap, which is about $35,000 right now. Uh, it's likely that will go away. And so we want to start the process early. Mm -hmm. Mr. McHugh's done an exceptional job as the mm -hmm. interim, and we want to make sure that we have a thorough and um, uh, good timeline to, to find a, a replacement. So that's that's the tentative plan at this point to advertise in late October. Can we uh, bring that back as a discussion item then? Absolutely. Make sure we Absolutely. Make it right to that. Absolutely. Um, motion. All right, Mr. Puno. Uh, do we have a second? Ms. Turner, uh, all in favor? Motion passes. All approved. Um, um, going on to committee reports, Ms. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Temple. I did provide um, a staffing report. Um, did anyone have any questions? Oh, so you've been pretty busy. Yeah, I've been very busy. <laughs> Part of that staffing report later on, we do have our candidate who is identified as the point as the uh, point six. Uh, health teacher and a sliver of physical education mm -hmm. here with us this evening, Courtney Townsend. So you'll be appointing her a little bit later on, but she's mm -hmm. meant, her position is mentioned on the mm -hmm. staffing report. 
And we are going to be holding new staff orientation on um, August 19th and August 20th. We have a good uh, two full days um, with our new hires. And uh, right now we are almost up to 20, 20 new additions to our East Greenbush family. Wow. That's awesome. I think it was great to see that 58 applicants applied. Yes. Um, took off. I really hope that it gives folks that array of uh, applicants to look through and really hoping we get good good people or good mm -hmm. candidates out of that yeah. yeah excellent thank you miss cannon um so i don't believe we have any table motions uh any old business all right moving on to the consent agenda uh, do anyone need anything separated out or any questions about an item on the consent agenda i just have one um under b obviously we're we're doing all the fall sports so i just want to make sure that we and i think we did it last year we implemented training for them and we're guaranteeing that, you know student you know awareness <laughs> training all that stuff and that's all still being Yes, and actually we're doing some additional training from what we did last year. Uh, Mr. Stiles, Ms. Cannon, and Mr. Uh, Jones are working on some DASA-related training uh, above and beyond the normal DASA training that we do, which is the Dignity for All Students Act. We may have to do that in the beginning of the season due to the availability of the trainer, but we're going to focus on specific issues around student-to-student -student relationships as well as creating a safe environment for all kids within the sports program mm -hmm. in terms of positive coaching and in terms of uh, some of the microaggressions we see in sports among the players. Okay, thank you. So, and we're gonna really focus on types of examples of things that come out in athletics. I don't know mm -hmm. if Mr. Styles and Ms. Cannon have anything to add on that. In addition to um, the DASA training, we're also doing a very um, detailed overview of the athletic code of conduct as part of um, that initial um, back to coaches night. Um, so we just want to make sure that there is a, um, an orientation that gets followed. And then also, um, if anyone, um, cannot make one of the meetings, um, Mr. Jones is, um, going to be having everything on another day as well. So we're going to have two options. And that will include all coaches required mm -hmm. to be part of it. Not just the full-time employees that we have serving as coaches, but the volunteer coaches Volunteers. and everyone that mm -hmm. may work on the outside of the district is required to participate in that. I'd like to maybe think about how we can, um, I don't know, enhance that for the parents at the Meet the Coaches Night too. I mean, we all have accountability mm -hmm. to, to teach our children to be respectful. Um, so it would be nice, and, and, and I think Frank does do it. I'm just thinking maybe we need to expand a little bit mm -hmm. on what are the, the code of, you know, codes of right. standard, you know, um, one just, of the just things the that Mr. Process. Jones did last year, which I thought was good, and I know Mrs. Skinnerski, you talked about it at a board meeting, is he brought in a sports psychologist yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to speak to the parents. Uh, I've encouraged him to continue to find uh, outside resources and guest speakers to come to the meet the coaches night. I, I've also encouraged him to uh, make sure that uh, you know everyone within the athletic community is aware that you know perhaps some of the practices that were acceptable years ago in athletics they may not have been right but they were acceptable are no longer acceptable uh, within the athletic program um, uh, particularly uh, kids are more um, apt to internalize comments and things that are made nowadays than they may have been a few years ago even a few years ago because of some of the uh, mental health and other mm -hmm. factors in the environment that affect the way our kids are growing up. So I've had those conversations with Mr. Jones and through the training we're trying to put together, including with uh, Meet the Coaches Night, we're trying to emphasize that. Um, we want every, no different than the school or the classroom, we want every kid, every student athlete to feel accepted and to feel that they belong. Separate and apart from playing time, we want them to feel that they have a contributing role on the team and that they're valued for being on the team. Right. I, I, you know, I see it sometimes as, as a parent, as a just check it off. My, I got to go to, I got to go to parent night yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do like the interaction, you know, right. make it more actively yes. engaging yeah. and, and walk away with something right. more than mm -hmm. just. I did my duty by going in. Mm -hmm. We're working with Jody Sullivan from Quest Star Bosses to identify some of the training components. And um, 
majority was the individual that presented the uh, uh, youth empowerment yep. Yep. Uh, program. And Roy has had conversations with her, uh, Marissa and Terry Bordell. Yeah, so um, yes, that additional training will be happening um, for all of our fall coaches, and then we'll have it lined up um, for our winter, our spring coaches, and then we see that as being, um, you know, something that we do annually um, above, you know, all of our, our, our coaches um, have gone through the full DASA training that, you know, that is required, but this will, you know, be, um, you know, our, our goal is to have it more targeted to, you know, how does that, how does DASA fall into being a coach in sports and what are those types of situations that are, you know, not traditionally mm -hmm. discussed in a school setting, you know, that, that the sport, um, you know, has a little bit of a different dynamic that can happen. So on this list at the bottom, it includes volunteer coaches. Mm -hmm. The ones above are all the paid positions. And I understand that there's in district, out of district um, as well. And then you have number two is your, is your volunteer. And there's, I think like five or six. And one of them includes, um, it looks mm -hmm. like A.D. Jones. Um, so do all, do all of the volunteer coaches um go through the same process as a normal coach so all of these are adhering to all of the same guidelines we talk about sign all of it we they are technically considered um i know they're not employed by the district but they are held to all the same standards mm -hmm. correct correct um we also um uh re um vamped our coaching application for this uh school year um, and so uh, we had a thorough review of that. Um, uh, references were checked, fingerprinting um, was complete, and these folks will also be attending um, the orientation program with the um, trainings that we're going to be providing. And they have to maintain the license. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And when we say fingerprinting, are we putting it through normal, or do you also do, you know, um, the fingerprinting from different state agencies like OCFS to see if they have a... I was all go through the New York State Education Department through OSPRA. Okay. And is that what teachers go through? Yes. yes. Okay. And then Ryan Jones is included as a coach. Is he coaching? Or I don't think that... he really coaches. I think he's there as a backup mm -hmm. uh, when okay. necessary. He's a certified licensed coach, so he appoints himself to be there as a backup for any given situations where maybe the coach is if a coach has to go to the hospital with a kid with right, an injury right, right. or something like that, he's he's mm -hmm. uh, approved to do that. Okay, yeah. but he doesn't actually is not like he's consistently not around a specific team or whatever. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Um, is is there a motion to approve the consent agenda, Ms. Kamersky? Is there a second, Ms. Steinbeck? All in favor? Motion passes. Um, all, all approved. Um, see, moving here, moving on to the addendum uh, to instructional support. Um, yeah, this person want to explain. Yeah, so um, uh, we appreciate um, the uh, um, consideration for an addendum tonight. Um, we um, are very excited that um, Courtney is joining us um, today, and she's going to be. Um, a point six health teacher split between Columbia High School and Goff, and then um, point one physical education at Red Mill. So we're we're very excited to welcome you on board. Congratulations, Ms. Townsend. Uh, do I have a motion to approve this motion, uh, Mr. Buno? And a second, Ms. Turner. All in favor? Motion passes. All approves. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And is, is there any new board business? And we'll move down to the to the public forum. Um, I won't read the <laughs> nothing. Um, board forum. Any any last thoughts? Um, I'll start uh, with Ms. Kamersky. Yeah, I just hope everyone's having a great summer. Um, lots been going on. I can tell in the district, obviously, things are ramp up again pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, appreciate the work that Marissa and the team are doing to get the, the place staffed up. And just um, I think that there's a lot of work ahead for the board. Um, looking forward to the retreat and uh, all the things that flow from there. So, thank you, Mr. Puno. Nothing for me, Mr. Turner. Good. Right. Okay. Ms. Steinbeck. 
I just want to have an appreciation for uh, the summer bus drivers. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that um, we've had or the one, one that we've had has been really great. Um, so I just want to, you know, acknowledge that um, the, the folks, not only the summer school teachers, but, you know, all the staff that are working throughout the summer to keep to keep us going and the kids getting where they need to be. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Todd. So our latest podcast, which will be coming out soon, focuses on our bus drivers and our transportation departments. I'm there for it. Great. Yeah, very good episode. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we don't have a executive session today, so meeting is adjourned. Our motion for adjournment. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Ms. Steinbeck and a second. Ms. Turner and all in favor? All right. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>